Good afternoon, YouTube. It's Universal Fragrances here, and we are back with another video. Birth of Venus from the House of Argos, one of their newer releases. And Birth of Venus, for me, is a very fruity gourmand fragrance with a lot of florals in there. Certainly slightly feminine leaning, but guys, I don't want you to miss out on this one. I think this is going to be a compliment monster. Uh, Argos has done a fantastic job, I think, as far as I'm concerned, and in a lot of other people's opinions, they present their fragrances better than anybody else on the market right now. But of course, none of that would matter if the juice in the bottle was not worth it, because we're all here for the fragrances. And with the House of Argos, they set a very high bar with some of the first fragrances they released, such as Triumph of Bacchus, Donne, Baccio Immortal, Bravita Della Caccia. Um, you just have so many wonderful fragrances from them. Adonis Awakens is another one of my favorites. And I would almost put this in the category of Adonis Awakens, but a lot more fruity and a lot more gourmand. Uh, this has orange, grapefruit, peach, lavender, iris, narcissus, um, tuberose, violet. Just so many things have been packed into this fragrance. The raspberry and the chocolate really kind of give it that decadent uh, gourmand. And in fact, that chocolate is almost like a dark salted chocolate to where you do get a very, very slight maritime character in there. And one of my favorite parts about this fragrance is the base notes and kind of how they ground it and keep the fragrance from being too sweet as it develops. So in the base notes, you've got amber, vetiver, labdanum, sandalwood, cedar, and I believe cashmere wood is in there as well. So very great job with Christian Petrovic and Argos, you know, making sure that these fragrances, the new releases, meet or exceed the bar that they already set so high from some of their original releases. So again, fruity gourmand fragrance. You really get a ton of that peach, grapefruit, orange, and florals. And in the background lingering, you get definitely some of those uh, violet, raspberry, dark chocolate. Base notes, you don't get a ton of amber or anything right out of the bottle. I'm sure um, just only wearing it three times, it seems that those show up four to six hours on skin um, as it dries down. So it's really interesting, this fragrance, kind of what you would expect. It is just a fruity, floral, gourmand bomb. And then it kind of dries down to something a little less sweet, even though that sweetness still stays there. It doesn't become overly sweet, which for me personally, I think is a good thing as a guy that makes it a lot more wearable. But again, just because this is marketed a little bit more towards women, I still feel it's unisex. And for all my guys out there who have the courage to wear certain women's homage fragrances and have already found out that secret of how good some of those are, um, Amouage Epic 56 Woman, the X-Straight is one of my favorite fragrances. I wear Bond Number no. 9 West Side, which is an amazing fragrance. And Birth of Venus is right there with those two in terms of, you know, slightly feminine leaning fragrances that I'll personally be wearing and I know I'm going to get a lot of compliments on. And I can already tell that this is one of those fragrances that's just going to keep getting better and better with age. So again, I don't want you guys to really miss out on Birth of Venus just because it does have a, a slightly feminine leaning kind of notes to it. I think this is something that is very versatile as well. You have all the fruit and the florals, so you could certainly wear this during springtime or summer. And then you have that raspberry and gourmand quality with the amber, the woods, the labdanum and vetiver, certainly strong enough and gourmand enough to where you can wear it during cool weather. So I'm just gonna kind of abuse this bottle throughout the seasons, kind of find out what goes best for me. But I do consider this kind of um, in the category of like Jubilation 25 and Original Santal from Creed to where it is very versatile with the uh, ingredients that are in there. You can really wear this during any time of year. Some may think it's better suited for other times of year. That really just depends on your environment and your skin chemistry. But I think this bottle is gonna be going down pretty quickly because it is something I think I'm gonna be wearing throughout the uh, different seasons. I'm gonna try it out during this winter, the cooler days and the fronts come in that we have. Again, it doesn't really get much below like 40 or 35 degrees down here in the Southeast United States where I live. Um, other people up North, obviously you're gonna be dealing sometimes with sub-zero temperatures. So let me know how you guys find it in your environment. Leave it below down in the comments. But for me, just kind of smelling off the bat and wearing it two or three times, 
I really feel like Birth of Venus is one of those fragrances that's just going to be very versatile and you can wear it pretty much during any season. So guys, again, look at that artwork on there. I hope that's coming through very well on the camera for you. I'm trying to film everything in 4K. Um, some videos turn out better than others, just depending on how the camera is focusing. So main point of this video, Birth of Venus, beautiful fragrance. A lot of women have already figured that out, but this video was a little bit more for the guys. Don't miss out on this one. Get a sample of it. See how it goes on your skin and see how you like it, because I know a lot of other guys, um, in terms of what they offer from the House of Argos, a lot of guys like me, have figured out, you know, Adonis Awakens, huge compliment monster, maybe slightly feminine leaning. And you could probably put the, uh, obviously the poor femme is very feminine leaning. And I know certain guys that wear the poor femme as well. And it's a very good fragrance, but especially Adonis Awakens and Birth of Venus. Um, don't miss out on those guys. Really don't miss out on those. I think they're going to be huge compliment monsters. So again, get a sample, see how it goes on your skin. For me, I pretty much blind bought this. I did have a sample before, but it was something even before it came out, just looking at the notes, I'm like, oh, Argos is doing something with chocolate in there. This is kind of like their first true gourmand fragrance, I suppose you could say. And for me, it's just the knock out of the park, 10 out of 10 fragrance. I feel like I could almost say that about every Argos, but again, I really hope, and I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way, that Argos really starts focusing on staying niche not releasing too many fragrances they've done a great job so far but we just don't want to see them go down that road of trying to put profits over quality and as long as argos keeps that in the back of their mind um, i think they're going to go extremely far as a company they've already done a good job of that so far so there's nothing to show that they may be going down a different direction but again the new releases all of them great job by argos because it really is tough to meet or exceed a bar when you set it so high at the beginning with some of their original releases. And I think they've done that with Birth of Venus, Love Triumphs Over War, and of course, one of my personal favorites of the entire house, uh, quickly becoming Fall of Phaeton. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got a top 10 from Argos coming soon. A couple other things I'm gonna be trying to get done before Christmas time. I know it's a busy time of year for everybody. Got stuff to do and emails to hammer out before you leave on vacation for work. Kids got projects at school and they're getting out of school early. So if you got kids, you already know how that goes. But man, don't miss out on Birth of Venus, guys. All right. Have a great day. Bye.